In modern aircraft, avionics is a critical part of flying. Structural repair is also critical to keeping the aircraft in the sky. Avionics are the pilot's eyes when visibility is low. I'm Claudette George and this is another episode of Korea TV brought to you by the South African Civil Aviation Authority. We are the regulators of aviation in South Africa and our aim is to keep you safe in the sky. I know that the two subject matters sound very technical, but we've got two guests here today that will help us make it more understandable. Let's meet them now. Hi, uh, my name is Mtandir Matsebula. I'm an avionic technician for three years now. I work at South African Airways and I stay in Kempton Park. Hi, I'm Natalie Vui Makuela. I live in Norcom Park and I'm currently doing my apprentice at South African Airways Technical. Thank you so much. Um, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what exactly avionics is? Okay, I'm glad. Um, avionics Electronics is the electrical component system of aircraft. Uh, these include navigation, communication, indication, electrical generations, and multiple systems that work together to aid and system assistance the pilot and the aircraft. So they're basically the brains and nervous system of the plane. So it's my job to make sure that it's working properly, accordingly, and, and serviceable. So would it be correct to compare this to a dashboard of a car where you've got um, a display of instruments giving you information that help you drive the car? Yes, it's the same thing. I mean, there's an speed indicator, there's a rev meter and everything. And uh, it's the same thing that helps with the pilot to fly, like navigation, communication, safe landings and takeoff and fuel measuring. Uh, especially when visibility I mean, is outside, the pilot relies on those instruments and they become its eyes. That sounds amazing. That really sounds amazing. Um, I think for now, let's take a deeper look into putting it into practice and seeing what they actually do. thrust reverser. It helps the aircraft slow down when you're landing. And if you can check inside here, those arms there are holding up blocker doors. So those open up when you stop. And then that helps the air stop from going through the engine and makes the engine stop faster. This is where all the power comes from. So you get fuel from inside the tank and it comes through here, through the injectors. All these wires talk to the engine control box. And that's what tells all the controls inside the 
cockpit, what's happening. So all the indication, how much fuel you're using, how much oil you've got, and the temperature, everything comes from this very smart box here. Another critical component of um, aircraft is the structure. Could you maybe tell us a little bit more about what structural repair, um, what it entails? Well, as it said in its name, structural repair is about repairing and maintaining the structure and the body of the aircraft. So we work with aluminium because it is strong and it is light at the very mm -hmm. same time. So it's easy to bend and shape it into the particular components that we need for the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, just to give you a better understanding, let's take a look at what uh, structural repairs actually do. I'm going to show you what a repair looks like on a Boeing 737. I'm a sheet metal uh, technician at FlySafe. This is what a repair looks like after it has been done or completed. Here we are at the sheet metal shop. We're going to show you actually round about how it happens that the repair is done on the, on the aircraft. So you get a sheet, aluminum sheet like that, and mostly we're going to have a drill with a drill bit. We pick up the holes on the sheet because we have to put rivets on all the holes. Mostly we have an edge distance or a distance that is allowed for each rivet spacing. So we're going to drill rivet, uh, holes on the plate and then we're going to use a rivet gun to do the riveting. This is Klecos. Before we do the riveting, we put the plate on the aircraft and this is to hold the plate on, in position on the aircraft so that we can pick up holes and then also put it on the aircraft where the repair is going to be. This is a die grinder used for cutting. As you can see, there is a blade there. This is when we have to shape our repair or our doubler. We use this for cutting and we use this for making it smooth and clean and everything. So this is the process that you're gonna do if you had to do a repair such as that one on the aircraft. We start off by identifying the crack. If there is a crack on the repair, which on the fuselage, which is not allowed on an aircraft. So we have to do a repair afterwards. We normally use uh, aluminum on uh, all the repairs that we're doing as sheet metal. And one common thing that you're gonna see on all the repairs we have, the rivets, that's always going to be there. We have uh, different types of rivets. This is a round head. And the ones that you see that is flush there, it's a countersink. So, Putting in a rivet, uh, a rivet in, we're going to have one guy on the outside with a rivet gun, riveting the rivet, and one guy inside with a parking bar, just to make the rivet flush on the inside. So this uh, repair has been done. It will take you almost, uh, let's say, 16 hours to complete a repair like this. Once you have done the cutout on the, uh, on the crack, we normally call MDT to do a test on the high frequency uh, eddy current. So just to make sure that the crack does not go above what we have cut out. Only after that, we start doing the repair. We take the material, which is aluminum that looks like this, before we have put it on. We drill holes and then we take it to the painters. They're going to prime it. We put PLC. We put it on and then only we take the rivets and we start riveting. After everything is done, we send it to the paint shop or the painters come and then they paint it. And then it looks as white as you can see here. On all the repairs that we have, we always put a marking, a sticker, so you know exactly what kind of repair we have done. This sticker can show you everything you need to know about this type of repair or this repair and the location. Could you maybe tell us about where your passion for aviation comes from? For me, I mean, it started early when I was young. I, when I'm from a hometown called Ntlazache in Pumalang. You know? mm -hmm. I used to see planes like fly high up there and I wonder how they work because I was so amazed by them. So I would watch documentaries like um, a craft investigation. 
and I'll see like how the pilots fly the plane, how the whole things work and the different people involved. And also um, fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. Luckily, when, when we move in Kempton Park now, like I could actually see the, the planes like face to face because my, my dad would take me to the airport to the viewing deck and I would mm -hmm. actually see it myself. And for me, like that was personal. So basically, uh, the love for passion and the passion for aviation um, is fueled by your, the support from your family as well. Yes, exactly, because mm -hmm. with what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. it makes me proud that I made them proud. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it drives me every day. Wow, that's amazing. Are you from a small town as well? Tell us about, uh, you know, where you come from, uh, a bit of your background. I'm from a township called Tembisa, which is in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. So my love for aviation started then when I was a young girl, living in a household full of women. And I took it upon myself to do all the handy and technical things in the house. Mm -hmm. Being hands on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'd look at my neighbors and people in the neighborhood when they were fixing things. And it really got me fascinated as to what more can we do with our hands. Mm -hmm. So I went to school, did my research and so. Um, on that note, tell us about where we can, uh, you know, get information, where people can actually study if they want to become an aircraft structural repairer. Okay, I went to a college called Ekuruleni West College mm -hmm. where I did my N courses and one of the subjects I took was aircraft maintenance which where I got more information about the aviation industry and currently I am doing my apprenticeship at South African Airways Technical where I'm basically in the field so mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about um, what the requirements are and you know how long the, the, the studying actually takes, how long it would take for you to complete a course? Okay, so at South African Airways Technical, it's a three-year course, roughly, depending mm -hmm. on the pace of the modules. So we, the courses are separated into three phases. So phases are what normal people know as years. So phase one is like year one, mm -hmm. where we do all the introduction and getting to know more about aviation in general. Mm -hmm. So phase two is where they teach you specifically about the trade that you have chosen. And phase three is where we work on live aircrafts, get to do more practical work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's really amazing. You know, woman hands on. <laughs> Could you maybe tell us about um, aircraft avionics technicians? Where and how about you go about studying for that? With me, I started early when I was in high school because uh, the subjects that I mainly chose were pure maths and physics. Mm -hmm. And the passing mark was from level five and above. Mm -hmm. Then when I was done, I went to college when I did my end courses from N3 to N6. Mm -hmm. But the bare minimum for you to qualify for these schools is an N3 with the same like passing mark or metric. Mm -hmm. So for my, for my training, I went to a South African, um, um, South African, so, <laughs> South African, um, it was technical where I, uh, I trained there. I trained there roughly uh, for three years, where uh, there's three phases. You know? There's a phase one with roughly eight months. Uh, phase two is, uh, is six months, and phase three is the same thing. Now, so phase one, it's an introduction, so it's the basic fundamentals um, of ele electronics and the circuits and the fundamentals of flight. Then phase two is trade specific now, when you are taught the, the systems like of a plane and everything, mm -hmm. like how it works. Then phase three, you train and you work like with a crew from a plane, like a live plane. So they mentor you, you learn like how the rules work and the tooling and everything. Mm -hmm. Then at the end, there's a final test or like a trade test where now they test your skills. And then at the end, when you pass that, because it's a theory and practical. So when you pass that, you are a qualified mm -hmm. technician recognized around the world. Can you maybe tell us about um, the, the different parts or the different aspects of being an avionic engineer? Um, what is that broken up into? I know that there are three parts. Can you maybe just elaborate on that for us? Oh yes, uh, there's three. Uh, there's instruments, there's electrical, and then there's radio. Mm -hmm. Now, um, um, instruments, like the word says, it's the thingy, the aircraft um, thingy, um, like displays an instrument. And then electrical is the power generation, and then the wiring of the aircraft. Then radio is uh, basically communication. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. Um, We've really learned a lot. Um, and if, if you maybe just want to talk to the youngsters out there who aspire, you know, when they look up into the sky, they see an aircraft flying, they don't know how all of this works. Can you maybe give them some words of encouragement, you know, to boost them and um, 
motivate them to, you know, pursue a passion of aviation? So I would say that they should do more research so they know that whatever they love, they need to have more information about it and they should just keep pushing and do not be derailed or distracted by many things. And they also shouldn't be discouraged because a lot of people say that this industry is a man-based industry, which is true, but women can do it too these days. So they should just keep focused and keep pushing. Thanks. Now, for me, it's a mainly passion. You know, that's what you should go for because that's what you love and that's what should drive you. You know, uh, I saw a lot of uh, the people that I went to school with where they made the wrong choices, where they went with the crowd and they didn't do well further on in life. So you must make sure that you choose something that you love because that would drive you and that would mm -hmm. inspire people around you who would also support you. So definitely choose something you love. In my case, it's aviation. And I love everything that I'm doing mm -hmm. every day. So key elements is to be passionate about what you do, enjoy what you do and stay focused. Thank you so much um, for joining us on another episode of Korea TV. Feel free to drop your questions, comments, or if you have any feedback, um, if there's any other careers that you would like us to look into, feel free to um, comment or add that um, on the video below. F uh, follow us on our social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, uh, Radio on YouTube. Click subscribe and the notification bell as well so that you don't miss another episode and you're always up to date with what's happening in aviation. We've got a WhatsApp line as well where you can contact us if you need more information. Um, we thank you so much and we hope to see you soon.